Well, amino acids are kind of interesting in that there's a basic group here and an acidic group, and those groups are attached to the same carbon. So we've got, um, we can have this internal acid base reaction that will happen in neutral solution. And what happens is th this basic group can accept a proton, the acidic group can donate a proton. And so the acidic group on the same molecule can donate a proton to this amino group. And then we end up with this funny looking guy, which has a positive charge here and a negative charge here. And this is called a Zwitter ion. It's from the German zwei, meaning two. It's one of the very few times when my year of college German comes in handy. I had to take that from my chem major. Um, so a Zwitter ion, meaning it has a positive and a negative charge on the same ion. We haven't seen anything like that before. But this is what they do in neutral solution. So there's your definition. Zwitter ion, a molecule having a positive charge on one atom, a negative charge on a different atom, and no net charge. So the amino acids in their solid state, in their pure solid form, and in neutral solution, pH 7, are in the form of a Zwitter ion. Now, if we change the pH of the solution, either adding hydroxide ions or hydrogen ions, then we'll have acid-base reactions occurring. So here's the Zwitter ion, pH 7. If we add um, acid to this and cause the pH to be lower in an acidic solution, then this uh, will become protonated again. Remember that when you have an acid and it loses its hydrogen, what remains is the conjugate base. And all of these reactions are reversible. And so this conjugate base now can accept a proton, going back to its original state. Now this molecule does have an overall net charge. It's not a Zwitter ion anymore. And this happens in acidic solution. To make it go back to this Zwitter ion, well, we would have to add hydroxide and raise the pH back up to 7. If we add more hydroxide, the hydroxide will take, here it is over here, it will take this proton off. This um, is the conjugate acid, and so it will donate a proton to the hydroxide and go back to its amine form. So this is what it looks like at high pH and at low pH. So we've got three forms. This is the anion, the Zwitter ion, which has both on the same molecule, and the cation. And because of this, amino acids can function as buffers. And this is one of their functions. Do you remember what a buffer is from general chemistry? In general chemistry, we said that a a buffer solution was a weak acid and its conjugate base in relatively equal concentration. And so what happens with, with something like this, if we add acid to the solution, the Zwitter ion can accept protons and neutralize the acid. If we add hydroxide, the Zwitter ion can absorb that and neutralize the solution because it can go either way. It can act as an acid or a base. So this question is asking us to draw the structural form of the amino acid valine that predominates in solution at each of the following pH values. So this is where our little table will be handy. Let's find valine. And I'm just going to draw it as it shows up on the table. And notice, as they're drawn here, they are not in the Fisher projection form. And there's, there's a good reason for that we'll talk about later. Okay, so there's valine the structure of valine. 
draw the structural form that predominates at pH 7. Well, what did we say happens at pH 7? It forms this vitrine. We have this internal reaction where this hydrogen is donated to this amine group. The carboxyl group here is acting as an acid, and the amine group is acting as a base. So we lose that hydrogen. Oh, let's just rewrite the whole thing. And then that has a negative charge. And then over here, now we've got three hydrogens, and this is going to have a positive charge. So this is the structure at pH 7. Now pH 12, is that acidic or basic? That's basic. That means we have more hydroxide ion. So then we look at this Vitter ion and we say, well, if we've got more hydroxide ion, hydroxide is a base, bases accept protons, which one of these can donate a proton? This amine group, right? This protonated amine. So in a basic solution, I'll just write it on the left because i got to write it somewhere. And the rest of this is just going to stay the same. So in a basic solution, instead of NH3 plus over here, we're going to have NH2. Because the hydroxide will accept the, that proton. Is this making sense? So what's going to happen? pH 2 is acidic, right? More hydrogen ion than hydroxide ion. So which, the NH3 plus or the COO minus, which can accept a proton? The COO minus, right? So that will become COOH and the NH3 plus will stay the same. We can do this for any of the amino acids. All that's different between them is the R group. Any questions? So if, if I gave you this table showing you the structures of all the amino acids, and gave you maybe this structure over here. You should be able to look at that and tell me which amino acid it is, because I gave you the table. And you should be able to say something about the pH, whether it's neutral, acidic, or basic. When we look at this and we see that both of these are protonated, this must be in acidic solution. When we have this Vitter ion that's neutral, and when neither is protonated, then that's the basic solution because the base pulls all the protons off that it can. Does that make sense? When we have the acidic and basic amino acid, the side chain can also acquire a charge. So this is, which one is this? aspartic acid. So this is aspartic acid. Here's aspartic acid as this vitterion. Um, it's being drawn with the side chain down here. So here's our carboxyl group and our amine group and they have done that internal acid-base reaction and so this is what we've got kind of a neutral pH or moderately low pH. If we go to lower, if we add more hydrogen ion, the Zwitter ion portion becomes protonated. That's the same thing we saw before. If we go up a little bit in charge, I'm sorry, in pH, so we're adding some hydroxide, 
this acidic hydrogen is going to come off before the extra proton on the amine group here. And so now we'll end up with a negative one net charge. If we continue to add hydroxide, then we'll also deprotonate this group. So now we've got more combinations that are possible. Four different forms are possible. And you can do this with all of the acidic and basic ones. Any questions? An isoelectric point is the point at which, the pH at which an amino acid exists primarily in its zwitter ion form. And this is going to vary a bit for the different amino acids. And so we're not going to, we're not going to do much with this number, but you should know that it exists. So a lot of these are, um, you know, fairly neutral, um, around pH 6 to 7 or so. Arginine has got a very high isoelectric point. So arginine exists as a zwitter ion at pH 10.76. Um, and there's one in here, yeah, aspartic acid is a zwitter ion at 2.77, so a fairly acidic pH. So what the, what the isoelectric point means is the pH at which it's primarily in its zwitter ion form. If you go higher pH, you add more hydroxide, you're going to deprotonate the NH3+, and you'll end up with a negative 1 charge. If you go below, significantly below the, the isoelectric point, adding acid, then you'll end up with a positively charged ion.